You look me, 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 me. Dragon King. Oh, God, not again. Oh, it's the original Street Fighter in all its mumbly glory. But this time the title's backwards. This is Fighting Street, a port for the TurboGrafx CD, released as a launch title for the console add on in the US. Yes, that's right, there were actually Street Fighter games before Street Fighter 2. Capcom's original entry in the Street Fighter franchise, and their first fighting game ever, was released to arcades in 1987. And for the full lowdown on that, check out my other review here on Undertow. But this review will be taking a closer look at how it was translated to the TurboGrafx CD, and resulted in what might possibly be one of the worst versions of Street Fighter in existence. Oh man, if I had shelled out the retail price of $400 for that CD drive, and this was the first thing I played on it, I'd probably Hadouken the crap out of my TV. So on the surface, it looks fairly close to the arcade original, other than the title change. I'm still not sure why they did that, unless it was their way of disconnecting this monstrosity from the Street Fighter series altogether. The sound effects are also still intact, all those great grainy yells, and of course, the infamous speech sample rolls. The music has been updated though, utilizing the high fidelity capabilities of compact discs, although this music is pretty forgettable, honestly. But there's of course a catch to using one of those newfangled CDs in the form of some excruciating loading time. You could almost cut this silence with a roundhouse kick. And once the fighting finally starts, you'll realize another critical problem. The turbo pad only has two buttons. So in order to use your three different strengths of punches and kicks, you have to hold the button down for a specific amount of time to execute them, which is a bit similar to the deluxe arcade cabinet version that had pressure sensitive pads, but it definitely doesn't have the same impact on home consoles. Top it off with a kind of soft D-pad and compound that with unresponsive control design for the game in the first place, and pulling off special moves is an incredibly rare feat. <laughs> Sadly, I think one of the few redeeming qualities of this game, this port especially, is making fun of it. And with a red-haired Ryu in front of Mount Rushmore for the cover art, I guess that's pretty much to be expected. If you're morbidly curious about the origins of the Street Fighter franchise, check out the arcade original on Capcom Classics Collection Volume 2, but when you come across this version on the Wii's Virtual Console, I'd save those Wii points for a game that actually works. But at least, this is still a bit better than some of the versions that were released for Commodore 64, ZX Spectrum, and other home computers. But still, you'd best avoid this one and break it in half with an epic dragon punch.